this morning and thank Trey. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for bringing us someone who could lead us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. So we're going we're gonna to start out uh, today in the book of, uh, of John, chapter number 16, and we're going to be in verse 7, and then we're going to end up in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. He okay, James, are you trying to be a good, a good employee again? <laughs> Uh, so, um, we're going to be in the book of John, chapter uh, 16, verse 7. And uh, this week, you know, the first week we talked about the calm, you know, the, the peace that God wants us to experience. Then last week we talked about the confidence that we have. So when we, when we settle ourselves down and have the calm, then we, we can gain the confidence of studying and knowing God's word. And then when we go in that confidence, when we're faced with certain situations, we know that we can face them and walk in, in peace. And so, so in John chapter 16, starting with verse 7 through 11, it says this. It says, nevertheless, I tell you, now these are the words of our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And then it says this, it says, and, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and, and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. Heavenly Father, I ask, Lord God, for you to anoint these lips of clay one more time to speak your word to your people. Give us ears to hear your word, Lord God. Give us the courage to live out your word, Lord. And I just pray and thank you that you're here with us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. So that last scripture in verse 11, you got to know this. The enemy has already been judged. He, the indictment has already happened. He's, he's already a defeated foe. He, he can only rear his ugly head in our lives when we do not do what? And it tells us there, when we do not believe in who Christ is. And so when we're faced with situations and, you're, and, we're, and, we're, and we're maximizing our faith, we're walking, we're people of faith. When we're faced with situations, that's not the time to retreat. That's not the time to be fearful. That's not the time to be dismayed. Now things will rise. Your flesh will try to rise up. People who are, that's why it's important who you're around. You need to be around people of faith, people that are going to encourage you and tell you you can. See, too many times in life, you're around people that aren't celebrating your successes. You share something with them and they'll tell you why you can't, why you shouldn't, why you, why you won't. And sometimes you need to take those people and then escort them off the front seat in the auditorium of your life. In fact, there may even be times that you have to escort them out the building. 
But see, when you're around the people of God and the people of faith, what they begin to do is when, when you share your visions and your dreams, they begin to cheer and celebrate you and they say, yeah, let's go. How can I help you accomplish what it is that God told you to do? And so in this, God has sent us the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the one that brings us to the truth. And so when you're faced with a situation, I don't care how high the mountain is, I don't care how wide the valley is, if you come to God and you understand who you are, Instead of looking at the, at, the, at the Dead Sea, instead of looking at the situation and saying, I don't know how we're going to make it, we can look at that situation and look at, at heaven and say, God, I can't wait to see you take me to the other side. And then when we, when we have that kind of attitude and that kind of mentality, because we re, we're renewing our mind in the word of God, we're feeding our spirit, man, the bread of life, that word, God's instruction. Then we, are, we become sober-minded so that we can hear and see and follow the instruction of the Lord. So instead of being fretful, Instead of being afraid, and like I always say, you know, your, our feelings are real, but it's what you do with those feelings. Now you said, hey, be angry, but what? Sin not. He said, don't let the sun go down on your what? Wrath. Make things right between you and the Father. Don't go to bed with those things. Cast those cares upon him because he cares for you. And so here in this scripture, Jesus is saying, I'm going to go be with the Father. It's expedient. I must go. It's time. But this is for whose benefit? Not for God's benefit. Not for Jesus' benefit. He told them it's for what? Your benefit. Right? Right? Amen? He said, it's for your benefit that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. So let's turn to the book of First Peter. And we're going to be in chapter number one. And we're going to start with verse number six. And, if, and it's up on the screen as well. But it says, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now, th this is what, he, what he's saying. See, some of us are taking situations and we're believing, the Bible says that what the devil meant for bad. Doesn't say what God means for bad. It says what the devil meant for bad, that God will what? Turn it around for what? His good, for good for those who what? Love him. And Jesus says, how do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I say? And so if we're not following what the Bible is telling us, if we're not following the precepts, if we're not following the instruction manual, then instead of taking personal responsibility, because what 
the three things that were in the Ark of the Covenant were what? The rod of Aaron, the showbread, and the Ten Commandments. In each one of those things, God provided sustenance for his children in the wilderness. God provided them kingship or rulership or priesthood through the budding of Aaron's rod. And then God gave us an instruction on how to get there. But in each one of those situations, man failed and man sinned. And this is why when those things were in, the, in that Ark of the Covenant, what was over top of that was the red covering. It's the covering of the, it, which represents the blood of Jesus. And then there was two angels standing there over it. And see, it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the angels that stood before the tree of life because God did not want man to eat of that tree in its fallen state. And so he gave us a choice. You have a choice to believe the word of God or you have the choice to believe the report of the world. As for me and my household, we will what? Believe the report of the Lord. See, I'm not preaching to you this morning out of somebody's book or some lesson that I got from a, 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 an hour sermon and then made it my own. What I'm, what I'm sharing with you this morning is how from the time before I was even conceived that he knew me. See, before you were conceived in, in your mother's womb, he knew you. He had a plan and a purpose for you. And you have to be convinced of that. And so from the time I was born, there's been an, uh, that I was conceived, there had been an attack against that seed. At two, I was, I was stricken with diabetes but did not die. I don't know, I was about seven years old and the, the, uh, that first exit in Mingo, my Uncle Ray and uh, my Aunt Debbie lived there and my two cousins lived on that street. And them being, they were both older than me. Sorry, I shared that on Facebook, guys. But they were both older than me. I decided to, they were said, hey, let's get on these big wheels and ride down the hill. And then being female, me being all boys said, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Now, if you find yourself saying that in the wrong context, it can hurt you. But I get, get on this big wheel and I begin to pedal down the hill. Well, the pedals started going faster than I could pedal, so I just put my legs up. But what they didn't tell me and what I didn't know, and this is why information is important, is at the end of the sidewalk, they turned. And I look back like, uh-oh. So I'm headed down to Route 7 on a big wheel. Now, my father was watching all this, and my mother shared she could testify that my dad basically jumped from that balcony to the street and, you know, in a, in a leaping bound, and he was there at the end of that road. But fortunately for me, there was a curb there. And I still remember that, that bike, fly, that big wheel flying in the air, and me flying and hitting my chin on the sidewalk, and I don't... I blanked out, and the next thing I know, I looked up, and there was my Superman, my hero, my father. But see, even while you were yet a sinner, Jesus died for you. Even in our ignorance, in our not knowing. But the thing is, there comes a time in an age of accountability Personal accountability for your actions, where you're at in life, and what you're doing in life. 
and, and, we, and we become so soft and want to blame everyone else for where we are when you have your own destiny in your hands. You are a result today of the decisions that you made yesterday. And if you don't like where you're at today, then begin to confess what God says about you and you'll end up being there tomorrow. Because God is a God of purpose. God is a God of plan. There, in the Hebrew, there's no word for coincidence. He knows the decisions that you're going to make. And see, some of us are standing at the end of the road and there's that sign with an arrow pointing both ways. And you're like, I don't know if I should go to the left or the right. And you're paralyzed by fear. And see, some of you in your whole life, you've been trying to go three and oh. Well, I want to live my life completely without any mistakes and no mess ups and no stumbles. I'm going to be perfect. And you're paralyzed in your perfection. And really that perfection becomes what? A hindrance to you. They say it's really the highest form of apathy, of laziness. You're at a road of infliction, of, 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 of you're, you're at a point of decision and you're paralyzed at that road. And here's what I want to tell you. God already knows the way you're going to take. Now, one road may take you there quicker and easier. But here's what I want you to know. Even if you take the other road, all roads lead to him for those who love him. See, even if you take a misstep, even if, you, even if you stumble, even though you may have taken the harder way, God is a great God. He's an awesome God. He's a God of mercy, and he's a God of grace, and he will lead you back to him. He does not leave you orphan out there isolated by yourself. Because even the prodigal son, came to the end of himself. And some of you need to come to the end of yourself. You need to come to the end of your religious pious and get a hold of the truth of God so that you may live this life here free. Because that is God's desire for you. And see, I'm not worried about being three and oh. I'm worried, I don't care if I fail a thousand times. But I'll tell you this, if I fall a thousand times, I'm going to get up a thousand and one times because I know I'm going to end up where God wants me to be because my heart is pure. My intentions are right. And see, some of us are afraid to make that mistake and we stay in abusive situations. We stay in, in, in situations that we know we shouldn't be in. And we think there's no way out. So then instead of blaming ourselves and our decisions, we begin to blame others. We begin to blame God. In fact, you even begin to blame the enemy. But it's not the enemy. Because as we read earlier in John, he's already judged. He's already defeated. You are a person of purpose. You are a priesthood. You are a person of authority. So you have the ability to speak. You have the ability to believe and trust God's word. And guess what? He's looking over it to perform it in your life. So here, when we walk in the, in the praise, in the honor, in the glory of Jesus Christ... See, the enemy wants to keep you blinded. He wants to keep you away from the truth. He wants to keep your mind cluttered. He wants your focus to be on other people instead of on yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. We're, we're to pray for people. We're to, we're to serve mankind. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. You see, some of you this morning, you the same grace you give others, you need to start giving to yourself. Some of you are living under condemnation. Well, I messed up yesterday. I messed up on the way in here. 
And this is, I can hear John the Baptist saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So in verse 8, it reads, it says, Whom have ye not seen, ye love in whom, though, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls." So here, what, 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 what Peter is telling us, so this is the same Peter who walked with Jesus. This is the same Peter that kept sticking his foot in his mouth. This is the same Peter who kept messing up and doing all the wrong things. And God said, upon, Jesus, upon, or Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. The same Peter that denied him three times. But it's, it's this Peter it's him who received the Holy Spirit, walked in the truth of it, and saw the greatest re start of the greatest revival of, of mankind, which we today are still living in as a New Testament church. It says, whom having not seen, yet love in whom, though, you now, though now you see him. Here in verse 9, it says, um, it says, uh, down here it says, uh, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And see, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 said, is cursed is anyone who what? Hangs on the tree. Jesus came to die. He came to fulfill the law, every prophetic word, every, every dot and every tittle. He, he was the fulfillment of it. But if you read in Deuteronomy and it talks about the curses, the curses were what? Life forever separated from God. The curses were what? Poverty. The curses were what? Sickness and disease. So when he hung on that cross, he hung for everything that you are going through. And so when you, when we accept those things as a punishment from God, we're saying, Jesus, what you did on the cross is, was not enough. And when he walked the earth, he told them. The man asked, if it be your will, heal me. And Jesus said, what? It is my will. And I know I, I, I can hear the enemy speaking to your mind right now. Well, what about this person? What about this situation? What about this? And, and all I have to say is, but God. All I have to say is that, he, that it says that by his stripes, you were already healed. And we're all going to leave this world. Because, see, see we, 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 we need to gain the biblical and the spiritual definition of what, what the Bible is talking about. We, you can't understand this word without the Holy Spirit's insight. Oh, you could study it. I mean, there are many biblical scholars that are atheists. There are many people that know this word. In fact, Satan knows the word. Even when he tempted Jesus, he was quoting the Old Testament. He was quoting scripture to him. But when Jesus replied, Jesus came with the rhema word, the right now, the living word, rightly dividing the word of truth for the situation at hand. And see, some of us need to get a revelation of that rhema word, that real word, that word that is going to deliver you in your time of need. And see, when you get a hold of that word, I don't care, you can make fun of me, you can laugh at me, you can say what you want to say, but I know in whom I believe. And in my 50 years of being on this earth, I've seen some things, I've been through some things. 
But at the end of the day, I read the end of the book, we win, I win, you're a winner. And you are not a victim, you are a victor in Christ Jesus. And God will prevail. Come hell, high water, no government, no, no kings or queens, no legislation can stop God and his people. There's been wicked kings. There's been um, conspiracies from the beginning. See, some of us haven't read the Old Testament. We don't have an understanding. But when you read Kings and Chronicles and Samuel, it talks about all these things. But at the end of the day, God always raises up a standard for his people. And so the question for, for you this morning is, in whom do you believe? What do you believe? Because if you believe you're going to die of the sickness you have, then guess what's going to happen? You're probably going to die. Now, I, 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 I can say that. So I could get away with a lot of different things. Not just because I'm a pastor. Because I lived it. I live what I'm talking about. I looked at that death angel and I smacked him in the head with the word of God. I took out my sword and cut off that giant's head. And see, God wants to take you from glory to glory. But, it's, but when you go from mountaintop, sometimes you got to go through the valley, but the valley wasn't meant for you to die in. The valley was meant for your giants to die. And see, when you're, when you're in that, when you're in the battle with the bear, you're in the battle with the lion, what that's doing, that is, that is a testing, a proving of your faith. So then when that giant comes, you say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would come against the anointed ones of God? I will not bow my knee. And see, this is what, when, when they talked about the fire, Gold being tested by the fire. He said, you are more precious than gold. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were bound in chains because they would not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar. They would not bow down to the idols in the land. And so they threw them in the fire. And then he said, turn it up seven times more. And they went to having a barbecue. They went to having a party. The music was crunking. They were dancing. And they said, Lord, Nebuchadnezzar, didn't we just, did we throw three in there? Well, there's a fourth one. And who appeared? It was the Son of Man. And guess what happened? That fire that was meant to kill them, it burned off those chains that kept them bound. That fire that's in your life is not meant to harm you. It's to get rid of everything that's in your life that doesn't belong there so that you may sparkle and shine like the more than precious gold you are. You are a vessel. You are for a sign and a wonder. See, when I wake up in the morning and I grab my wife's hand, all of hell begins to tremble. I didn't, I didn't marry Kate just because she looks good. That was a benefit. I didn't marry her just because she cooks good. I didn't marry her just because she's smart, kind. All those things are benefits. But I married her because she had a vision. I had a vision to change this world for Jesus Christ.
And there's no greater prayer of agreement than if you are a spouse, if you are a couple married in this church here this morning, there's no greater prayer of agreement than you grabbing your spouse's hand and praying and touching and agreeing on something. And then we, when we get all of God's people doing the same, and hey, don't come under condemnation this morning if your spouse isn't here. Because where one puts a thousand flight, two puts ten thousand. We have enough here to run the enemy. Receive God at his word. Because that the glory, what, should follow. And you'll be magnified. But see, the thing is, is when you're magnified, we are for a sign. You're not the power. He's the power in you and through you. And this is why so many individuals, when they get to a certain level, they begin to falter and fall because now it's about them. And see, but when you look at me, I want you to see him because I'm a sign. And what a sign does, a sign points you to the source. I'm pointing you to Jesus. I'm pointing you to his word. I'm pointing you to pray. And this is why the fivefold ministry was called to what? Perfect the saints, to reprove the saints, to say, hey, this is what you need to be doing to get, what, get the results that God has for you. And these things should and they will follow you. But you have to believe them. You have to walk in it. It may require you to do some digging. In fact, I may, I may start asking you when, you when you ask me to pray, I'm going to ask you, how, how many hours have you prayed for it? There was a lady, a friend of the ministry, Darling Bishop, a great church, Solid Rock Church down there uh, uh, on the way to Cincinnati. There was a lady that kept coming to her for prayer for her husband. Oh, pastor, please pray for my husband. Please pray for my husband. So finally one Sunday, there, there's a lady again in line coming to her, and she stopped her, and she said, I'm not going to pray. And she looked baffled, like, what? And she said, I'm not going to pray until you start praying. And that might be tough love, but I'm going to tell you this. That woman got on her knees. That woman began to pray and seek God and listen to the instructions of the Lord. And guess what? her husband was in church by the end of that month. See, see, people of God, I'm not saying this, we shouldn't respect them or whatever, but, but we are people. And God's not a respecter of persons. And he said he has rendered the veil once and for all so that we may all enter in to the Holy of Holies. We all have access to him. And when you call me, all you're doing is that a, you know, I, I, you could have the faith the size of a mustard seed. My faith will move not only a mountain, it'll, it'll move a country. So here, here is what he says. He, he goes on to say, it's, it's, it's the Holy Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And see, the sufferings of Christ, Christ took all of the punishment on himself. So if he took the punishment on himself, why would God punish you? And the only, the only sin that's going to be judged would be the sin that you don't repent of. The sin that you don't ask for forgiveness of. The thing that, you, that, you're, that you're doing that you know you should not do. Because he took it on. 
And they, 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 they told of this. This is why the Holy Spirit, this is why we can have the Holy Spirit in us now because we don't have to, we don't have to sacrifice bulls and goats and turtle doves because the blood of Jesus Christ was enough. And so he said this, he said, testify before him of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed. And see, right now, God is revealing to you. God, the blinders are being taken off that you see that this is for you. He died for you. He died for your freedom. He died for your healing. He died for your well-being. He'll give you instructions how to be out of debt. He'll give you the instructions to, 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 to prosper in the things that you do. He'll give you the insight so that you can sleep at night. And it's, it's that still small voice. We all want to see God write it on the wall in this great, you know, split the eastern sky open, you know, and, and I think some of us might have thought that was happening these last two weeks with these thunderstorms. We're up there looking for God to write it in the sky. But no, it's subtle. It's reading and understanding his word and said, for those, to see, it has to be revealed. Why? Because the prince of this world, the small G-O-D of this world, his job is to blind your eyes to the truth. He wants to keep you in darkness. He wants you to blame God. He wants you to blame others. He wants you to be, feel like you're the victim, that nobody cares, and you're, you're all alone, and not even Jesus cares. And I'm here to tell you, my Bible says that, that he'll stick closer to you than a brother. He said, what greater love could a man have than to lay down his own life for you? And so we have to find our way to him. And so he, he, sent, he sends people like myself. And if you're aware, he'll send other people. He'll speak his truth to you. And so it goes on to say this. It says, um, it says, Jesus Christ, it says, Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy. So what? Be ye holy in all manner of conversation. He's telling you. He's giving you the recipe here. He's telling you what to do. Stop falling back to your former lust, your former ignorance. You're, stop holding on to the past. And I know for some of us it's hard because we, we've lived so long one way. But see, what, what happens with fire? Fire changes you. It actually changes the composition. And when something is touched by fire, it can't be restored to its, re its original source. And I could have done an illustration today, but I was afraid I might catch the building on fire. You, you, you take sugar and you take a flame to that sugar, you can't turn it back into that white granular substance it once was. Because it's forever changed. And see, some of us, it said, it said in the book of Acts that, that, that when the Holy Spirit came, it came like what? Tongues of fire, of cloven fire. It's the fire of God. It's the reproving of him. And he says, what? Be holy. And this is why it is important what you say. But here, I, I, want, you, I want you to know this. Because I'm going to set some people free in here tonight or this morning. I'm sorry. I, I spent a lot of time praying at night and preparing. That it just comes out that way. But I, I, want, I want you to know this. See, what, what I see happen, 
in certain circles is we tell people what, they, what we think they want to hear. We put on these masks. And I'm not talk, this is not about the COVID masks. I'm not talking about those masks. I'm not even talking about Halloween masks. I'm talking about the masquerade that we put on in front of people. And we're not real. And so we be, and we're not authentic. And what we do is we, we say, we try to say the right things in front of the right people so that we won't be judged because we want to be accepted. And then what happens is we, we never allow that heart transformation. And if you really want to be transformed, if you really want to be changed, you get, see, when, when, we're, when, when, when we're confessing the word, God already spoke the word. And he's not a man that he should lie. He already knows the word. The enemy knows the word. The person that is benefiting from you're reminding yourself of God's word. And that word will speak more loudly and clearly to you than your circumstance or the wrong teaching that you've been taught. And when you allow your heart, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so all I do is I, I observe. And I just hear. And, I, I, and I'm not sitting here judging, oh, we're this person. But I know where you are by what comes out of your heart. What comes out of your mouth when nobody's looking. That's who you are. And if you don't like who you are, then what? You need to what? Renew your heart. And But your heart is where what? Jesus is. Your heart is where God takes the fiery flame of his finger and writes his word where? On your heart. Kevin, what kind of truck do you have? Yeah, what kind of truck do you have? A Ram truck, right? You're convinced of that, right? So I can't sit here and make you believe something different. Right? I can't say, Kevin, you have, you have what do you mean you have a Ram? You have a Ford truck. Right? Because you're confident that you have a Ram truck. Because you've seen it. You were there when you purchased it. You drove it off the lot. You have a Ram truck. So when you go out and somebody asks you what kind of truck you have, you don't say you have a Ford. You don't say you have a Chevy. Because you know you have a Ram truck. Because you read the manual, you see the label, you know what you bought. Well, guess what? What comes out of your mouth is what you believe. And what you believe is what you see and what you've received. And guess what? You've been bought with a price. Your healing's been paid for. Your debt's been paid for. Your deliverance, the generational curses, all those things have been paid for and have already been settled in heaven. The person who needs to believe it is you. You have to believe it. You have to receive. You got to know when you look yourself in the mirror, I am a child of the living God. God's not dead. He's still alive. God is still a healer. He's still a deliverer. He's still a blesser. He's still, he, he's still Jehovah Jireh. He shall supply all my needs according to what? His riches and glory. So I said first, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. You have to convince yourself. Because you know what will happen? And, 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 and I've, I've done human behavior studies and saw, I've seen people 
And, and, and this happens a lot in, in court cases where they hold people for hours and keep badgering them. And finally, the person's like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I did that. What did you say I was? Yeah, I was there at that time. And, and, and they're basically been convinced that they did this thing. Think that maybe somehow that's how they'll get out of it. And, there, and, and, the, and there's people that will try to convince you that, God, that, that, that this, is, this is God doing this to you. It's God keeping you poor. It's God keeping you sick. It's God keeping you uh, having the worst life that you're living. And see, you need to tell that you need to take those people, and like I said, and just say, hey, here, come here with me. I got a seat for you. And you go from the first row to the back row, then you take them out the double doors, and then you take them down the steps, and you take them out the building, you shut the door, and you lock it. You say, not in my house, not for these ears. My ears are not garbage cans. I don't have time for that nonsense. Because I know what God said to me. Because they're out there, and, and, and they don't even know they're doing it. See, they're not, they're not, you're not hating them. But there's just some people you got to love from a distance. You got to stop allowing not everybody needs to have access to you. You got to learn how to set boundaries for yourself. I still remember, I, it, it, you know, I would be back there getting dialysis treatments, and Kate would be in the lobby, and they'd be talk, talking about stories. Oh, yeah, I re, you know, the guy that drove the van, the, dro the drive people there were sharing stories about, yeah, oh, man, this one guy, he did really well. He lived three years, then he died. You know, I called a, I won't say who it was, but I called a, a family member and they said, oh yeah, that, uh, not many people survive what you're facing. Stop building up my faith. Now they, they, they didn't mean, they did not, it, but see what I'm trying to say is I took, I don't blame them. Who I blame would be myself if I kept allowing myself to entertain that kind of talk. So what I did is I found some people that believed the word of God that stood there arm in arm with me and Kate and lifted up our hands when our, hands, our arms got weary and said, yes, you can. You can do this. You can make it. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And that's what you need to do. You need to find some people. Now, we want to see things be different in this area. Change your confession about it. Change what you say. But the only way you can change what you, you, you can mentally try to change it, and that only take you so far. But to have everlasting change, you got to allow God into your heart and allow him to place those desires there. And then you're convinced. Then you walk. Then that's where you have peace that's unspeakable. People are like, how are you so calm? How are you so, how, how are you so comforted in this time? And I'm, I'm, I'm like, because I got the Holy Spirit in me. And he's confirmed everything is going to be all right. So that, that I walk in it. I'm going to leave you with this. Stop letting the enemy see you flinch. Stop letting the enemy see you flinch. Because flinching means you're not, you're not confident. You, you're, you're not, you're, you're not, you know, when you're, when you're sitting there comfortable, in the comfort of God, of his arms. We serve a big, big God. And you're under his covering. 
And so when he comes, when the enemy tries to come at you, he's really coming against God. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to be in fear, but you can walk in the peace of God. Amen. Let us all just, let's just take a moment right now. And maybe, maybe you haven't had that witness of the spirit of God. Maybe even at times you say, I don't believe that. If you still don't, I'm not, I'm not here to try. I wish I can convince you. I wish there was something I can say or do. But only our Father who is in heaven can reveal himself to you. But if you're here this morning and you're like, I want that Holy Spirit. Lord, I want everything that you have for me. I want everything that you have for me and my family and those around me. If that's you, just put your hands up. Because I, I want everything God has for me and my family. And when you raise your hands, that's the international sign of surrender. You're surrendering yourself to the will and the purpose of God in your life. So Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my life. I will continue to live as you show me how. Purify my heart. Write your word in my heart. Father God, help me today to renew my mind. Holy Spirit, as I read your word, I pray for your rhema word, that alive word to come and to speak to my situation. And Lord, I will be obedient in following your instructions. So Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the Holy Spirit into this place and to every heart that wants to receive it. I'm in agreement with them right now, Lord God. I just feel the Holy Spirit right now. He's just moving. Somebody right now is being free of guilt. You've been, you've been walking under a cloud of guilt. I don't know what it is. He's not showing me that, but you've been walking under a cloud of guilt. You are forgiven. Somebody needs to know that right now. You're forgiven. Somebody here right now, you, you, you're, you're hurt. You're hurt. You're hurt. And the pain from your hurt is real. But the Holy Spirit is coming right now. He's just embracing you in every dry, and every tear. And as he, as you draw nigh to him, it's the, it's the warmth of that, of the spirit that's surrounding you right now. And that's the love of God letting you know that everything is going to be okay because everything is okay. Somebody's facing a past debt. I don't know what it is. Either you receive something in the mail or maybe you're going to receive something in the mail. And God wants you to know it's already been paid. Just receive it. He's going to show you how. He's going to show you. You just have to receive that it's paid. So if you have that thing at home, just Put your hands on it and say, this is paid by the blood of the Lamb. And this is paid by the word of my testimony.
I just feel that the the the, the uh, weight somebody is carrying the weight of their household right now. You're carrying the weight of your household right now. You're looking around. And you're, you're, you're 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 feeling your knees getting wobbly. You're doing all that you can do. And you've even said this. You you said this recently. Lord, I don't think I could take any more of this. I don't know what to do. I can't. I can't do this anymore. And what the Father is telling you right now was, you were never meant to cast your care, cast that burden upon me, because I care for you, and I will give you the instructions, and I will bring those. I, I will. It, I will bring people that will help you and hold your arms up. In all those situations that you're you're trying that you're struggling through, can only be answered in your life being yielded to Him. So just cast that weight upon Him, because He cares for you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm just waiting. The, the Holy Spirit's dealing with me right now, and I just, I want to be obedient to, to the Lord. There's somebody here that's having lower back pain. You're having lower back pain. God's healing your lower back pain right now. If you're here and that's you, I want you to come forward. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Yeah, lower back pain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kate, why don't you keep coming and pray? Hallelujah. You don't have to put your head down. Just raise your head. Raise your head. You're, 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 raise your head. Raise your hand. Look up to heaven. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Back pain is gone now in the name of Jesus. Nothing missing, nothing broken. You are healed. You are whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 This is, this is a word for someone. I'm not sure who. But, but, I, but I, I see a vision of a woman who's weeding her garden. And there's some brush, and she begins to move the brush, and it, and, and it looks like it's a hose. She said, I don't remember putting this hose there. So while we were, we were praying, I was waiting. I was asking the Lord, what is, what is this? What does this mean? And he said, look again. And what she thought was a hose and what I thought was a hose in the vision, it was a snake around the garden. And that snake was, was circling around. And there's somebody here, God's telling me, you need to weed your garden to expose the snake. And you have to you have to kick that snake out because you know if you don't that snake over time it's not going to strike you fast and bite you eventually you, you, you just all of a sudden drop dead what it's going to do it's going to continue to circle you it's going to start at your ankles and go up your your legs and go around your chest it's trying to suffocate you but you got to you got to weed your garden you got to get some things out of your life. You got to get some things that don't belong there. And it will expose that serpent. And God told me this. If you submit yourselves to God and resist the devil, he will flee. I don't know who that was for, but weed your garden. 
There's some, some relationships that you need to weed. You know exactly what I'm, God's telling me, you know exactly what that means. There's some people you got to create a little bit of distance from because they're, they're dragging you down the wrong path. They're taking you away from your focus of him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just, I'm just basking in his presence right now. I think this is a good time. Let's take, let's take communion. If we could have, um, Kate, will you, will you pray over the communion for us this uh, morning as Stan, uh, prepares to hand it out to everyone. So Stan is passing that out. If there's anything between you and the Father, just lay it down at his feet. Take it together as a sign of unity in him. Amen. good, good God. Amen. He's a good father. <laughs> he never ceases to amaze me what he can do. Lord willing, and the creek doesn't rise next week, I'm going to have Tyler share his testimony with Amen. What God's doing in his life next week. And I want, want us to uh, keep keep Yub in your prayers. He's been um, he's been working some odd hours and things, and uh, just keep him in prayer. He had some uh, vehicle issues as well. But uh, just keep you yeah, lifted up in prayer. But let, let's take let's take this bread together that represents the the body of Christ that was broken for us, so that we may be whole. Let's take let's take the bread together. This is it's the blood of Jesus. Amen that was shed once and for all for all of us. So as we take this, we take the life of Christ. So the, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. So let's take of the, of the blood now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is a good, good God. Amen. All right. Any praise reports here this morning? Any prayer requests? Let's go.
Amen. You're nowhere near Methuselah's age yet. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Any other praise reports or prayer requests? Yes. Next week, Drew's preaching, okay? Oh, I love it, man. I love it. No, to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Any Anyone else? Any prayer requests or, or who? Yeah, go ahead. I, I can't see it, this flower here. It's like, I was like, stand up, though. No, you are.
Yes, you're right. You got a new job? I'm just kidding. That's a joke. You, you got you guys missed the beginning joke, so you would you have to watch the tape. Jackie and Michelle, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Pray for Harry. Anyone else? Yes. They would have called me. <laughs> anyway. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Yes. That's the uh, across the street. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't want to miss anyone. Stand up or forever hold your peace until next week. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Well, let's let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the multiple testimonies this morning. Lord, you know how to get our attention. You know how to provoke us to, to be better and to do better, Lord God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the comforter this morning that guides us and leads us and reminds us of what we've studied and what we've read. 
the lessons that we maybe learned in the past, but Lord, we need to be reminded of. The Holy Spirit brings those things back to our remembrance. So I thank you for the, the testimonies of being set free of uh, pain in the body from the head to the toes. Thank you for the ability to accomplish tasks, Lord God, that seem insurmountable to us. We thank you, Lord God, even if we're getting hit in the head by a spiritual two by four, Lord God, that you give our attention. Lord, we thank you for those praise reports. We thank you, Lord God, that you brought James some help in not only is he a, a family member by water, but he's a family member by the blood of the covenant, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us opportunities to be a witness, Lord. So we call that person that Kevin so to seed with, we call him into the kingdom of God right now, into the kingdom of heaven. In this hour, in this moment, we stand in agreement with him. Lord, we come against all types of sickness and disease. It's not of you or from you, but we curse it at its root. And Satan, right now, I command you to take your hands off of Crystal, and I, I command you to take your hands off of Edna's mother right now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing and peace, Lord God, and comfort, Father, from you right now in that situation. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that we that you protect us, that no virus, no disease, nothing shall come to us, Lord God, and that we are healed. So we thank you, Lord God, this morning that Gary is completely healed. Father God, we, we pray for Michelle and we pray for, uh, was it Kathy? Jackie, sorry. Jackie, Lord God, we come against uh, what's happening there, Lord God. And, and Lord, you know the situation. We speak your healing. Lord, we command Harry's eyes to operate the way that you caused them to operate. So we lift Harry up to you right now in prayer. Lord God, we, we pray for Mr. Martin's wife's friend, Connie. We come against this bleeding blood tumor and what, what's going on. As she is healed in the name of Jesus. Stop the bleeding. Stop the process that of the enemy. I hope you and I command you to take your hands off of her right now as a testimony of the authority of the power of the word of God. By his stripes, Connie is healed. Father God, I thank you that you keep Mike and all those involved safe, Lord God, as they continue to work on the building across the street, Lord. We walk in your provision, your protection. You light the path and keep us. There's, there's provision in your vision, Lord God. So we thank you for keeping him and, and, and walking in that situation, Lord. Father God, you are doing such amazing things in our midst. We're, 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 we're in true gratitude to you, Father. So let's, let's pray this prayer together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us on to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So right now what I'm going to do is...